What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoop. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. There's just so much going on today. Mark Cubit's roaring. Arb is roaring. Uh, you have, geez, NNE rolling. I mean, take a look at this thing today. Nanonuclear energy. Turn this down a little bit. 32.73%. Get a guy from the DOE. He's going to be a uh, permanent board member there. We'll talk a little bit about that. I'll get you the exact data on it, but it's just... There's so much moving in this market, and, and it's been volatile as well, you know? I mean, you can see the increased, like, intraday volume here throughout it, right? Bounce off from that kind of gap down. We tested it, at least in the composites we were talking about. I think it really does want that 19,366 level again. It wants to hit the highs. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. Um, I was looking to get into some, like, cowboy plays with things like ARB. I mean, this is not a good company right now in any capacity. I think the thing they have going for them... I mean, it's 15 million market cap. Not a lot on them. Malaysian company, or Singaporean, I suppose, but yeah, Malaysian. And uh, they made a deal with Asus. They basically do IoT, um, AI, uh, connection-wise, which, you know, I, I don't know how that works out in, in any real way, but it's something I'm kind of looking more into. It just has some, like, obviously clear volatility here. You don't always want to trade words like that. You can see a pretty clean decline here. And this is on like declining revenue and stuff like that. It's really a trash stock in fundamentally speaking. But it's getting like these weird like bid plays up like this. Um, but I never like trading on Friday, especially things that are moving up like this. Because I, I always feel like you can get reversals on Mondays. Let's look what we got going on. We have the composite up about 0.26% trading at 19,015. You have uh, Dow Jones Industrial up 1.28% at 43,964. Man. That is just moving right back up as well. Uh, you have the SPY itself about 0.76% at 594. Yeah, the DXY is still pretty strong. Uh, right at a high here at 107.15 for the day, but we're trading right now at 106.95. You have crude oil back above the 70 level down at 70.14, up about 2% right now. That gold contract of about 0.78%, recovering uh, quite nicely over the past uh, you know, since we had that drop, we're gonna have Tim Ord on today as well in the second segment uh, and the third. Uh, let's see what else we got: copper off about 0.88 percent, silver off about 0.52 percent, trading at thirty dollars eighty four on that contract. Nokia smashed a little bit off about two percent. Tesla not doing anything. Still, dynamics up two percent. It's seven to one, man. The, I think after Snowflake, you're just seeing a lot of these cybersecurity stocks move up. I, Palo Alto beat, of course. Let's see, Cisco. Man, what is, yeah. Good thing we didn't get into that, right? Um, man, it's a nice day out. First, before we start going, I'm like thinking about that. It's going to be beautiful. Before we keep going, um, take a look at right here tomorrow, okay? We have Larry live trading. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a really fantastic kind of thing that Larry puts on the second and fourth Friday of every month. It's in our trading room. Uh, you can get the information for the trading room here. If you're paying for a subscription that uses the trading room, you don't have to buy the trading room here. Uh, you can just go ahead and do these steps. Uh, very straightforward, three major steps, right? And uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is I uh, will not be here tomorrow. So I'll be here like in the morning, right? Get everything kind of like kicked off and stuff like that. But if you're interested in coming, I know I've already spoken to a few people who are new subscribers to it. Uh, they've already done everything and they, they should be good to go. But get in and just email me tonight. I'll be on my computer. Um, I can't promise I'm going to be in the morning uh, to get you in, uh, but I want to get all the people in there uh, if you haven't subscribed yet. I know we already got a few new subscribers, which is awesome, and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing what they think about it. But it is a great time. So this is, again, this is good for two sessions, second and fourth Friday. Um, if you buy it tomorrow, I know that's the fourth Friday, you get to go to the second, uh, you get to the second Friday next month. But make sure you use Larry NOV24 at checkout. It's going to save you $50 off your first month subscription, which is a fantastic deal. Man, what do we... There's so much to talk about. You have SMCI moving up right here. This I am getting even more sus about. I don't know why I'm on a yearly on it, but you're at 15.89% right now, trading at 30. They did uh, submit a plan uh, to be you know good with the NASDAQ. Uh, with their NASDAQ offering, so we'll see what kind of happens with that. I'm still suspect of them going forward. I think they didn't have 
great earnings necessarily. Uh, you're, you're seeing people kind of move off from them, namely NVIDIA. Uh, they still owe NVIDIA a bunch of money as well. And we'll kind of see what happens. But I think people are playing this, right? I, I, don't, I don't think this is necessarily, and I might be wrong, right? I think people have other theses for it, but uh, I'm staying away from SMCI, which is hilarious after talking about potentially getting into ARB. Uh, but what do I know on that? And uh, man, you have like Archer up today, 15.33%. Uh, talk a little bit about Raytheon. So let's check my personal portfolio. And I do have a lot of Raytheon in it. It was great. I bought it at the COVID crash and that's just been one of the better things I ever got. But it's $120.80 right now, up 1.39% today, off from a high of 128.70. It's awesome, at least for the past uh, year. What is interesting about them is I think is what's happening with Russia, right? So we add the whole new kind of angle to this, right? With sending the missiles there, of course, the, uh, the British sent the shadow missiles, which is kind of a big issue as well, the storm shadows. So they launched their hypersonic missile, Ereshnik, right? One of the problems with that is that they had hypersonic missiles before us so in a big way. And we don't really have them right now. There's like development going on for them, but it, it becomes kind of a big issue, right? I mean, the hypersonic missiles obviously uh, can have uh, nuclear payloads on it. Not that I think really anyone's going to get into a nuclear war now, but the Air Force, this is in March, picks Raytheon for the hypersonic missile, uh, which is pretty solid for them. Uh, the SM-3 interceptor is uh, a ballistic missile, at least, that can be used against ICBMs, which is fantastic. Uh, so I think Raytheon is going to get a lot of attraction here. You know, if this war doesn't end uh, with, you know, Trump entering into the office, which I think a lot of people are anticipating, uh, this this probably gets hotter in some capacity. And you get these defense stocks going to move up. Raytheon's positioning with getting that funding for hypersonics is kind of interesting. I'm keeping Raytheon in my portfolio. I haven't added anything, but I'm definitely keeping it in there. Um, I like this like, stock a lot. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break.